do you want to talk us through some of the uh, things you've been talking about on your exciting podcast? So you've been talking uh, about something that's affecting a lot of people right now, which is stress. So uh, talk us through yeah. what, what your key, key thinking points are on that. Yeah, thank you, Connor. So, um, yeah, as, as you're saying, um, during this time, I have been been writing and producing a podcast it's called uh, The Health Locker. It's on Spotify at the moment. Um, we, we've done four episodes so far. So this uh, in kind of um, preparation for this, yesterday I recorded one on stress and the immune system and how the, the interplay between the two happen. Um, and I, I put that out this morning. So... Um, there have been two so far on stress, but essentially um, when we look at stress, just like Giselle was saying now, there are three main categories. So um, they can, you can have different types of stress. Uh, these can either be physical, chemical, or emotional um, stresses. And they can actually be broken down into micro or macro stresses. So, so stresses that are, are quite small in nature and ones that affect you quite, uh, quite largely. Um, so if we're looking at something like a, a physical stress that's affecting a lot of people nowadays, uh, that can be bad posture. So sitting for too long at a, a home desk or a home office rather than your ergonomically set up uh, desk at work that has the, your, your laptop or your screen at the right height, the desk the right height and all that kind of stuff. So having the, the incorrect desk set up at the moment is something that a lot of people are going through and it's causing neck issues, lower back issues, all, all these kinds of problems. Um, when we look at chemical stresses, Giselle touched on this as well, so what we put into the body and what we come into contact with. So snacking, unhealthy snacking is a major chemical stress at the moment for people. Um, just like Giselle was saying, your, your environment really dictates that. So if you're, you're out and your um, weekly shop or, or whatever it is that you're going to, you're grabbing the crisps and the chocolates and all that kind of stuff in a complete panic while you're in that, that shopping uh, center. Um, try, and, try and leave that stuff away, as Giselle was saying, and look for some more, more healthier snacks because that can really impact you as well. And then emotional stresses. So with everything that's going on, you know, you can have really, things can really affect you uh, quite, quite um, drastically. So that can be finances, being cooped up with the, the family it can be an amazing thing, but it can also be quite a tough thing at times. Um, other types of emotional stresses is just not knowing when the lockdown is going to be, be ending and just seeing that death toll rising. So watching the news all day, every day, having the BBC or something on really can be um, quite detrimental to us in terms of our, our stress levels. Now, everyone has uh, something that uh, we like to call a stress threshold. So when you, you wake up, you might start down here, your baseline. And as, as you have any of these stresses that happen throughout the day, as that accumulates, you might get further and further towards your stress threshold. Now, everybody's stress threshold is different. Uh, mine is different to, to say Giselle's and Connor's and, and every one of yours as well. Um, and it's, it's really related to your age and, and how your general health is in, uh, in general, um, the exercise you do, the amount of sleep you get as Connor touched on and, and all these kinds of different factors, but essentially everybody has a stress threshold. When you reach that threshold, you start knowing about it. So your body starts displaying certain symptoms. And you can see if, if someone walks into the room that you're in, you think, oh, that person looks stressed, or oh, that person seems stressed, that your shoulders start coming up around the ears and you get these tight bands of muscle in the, in the neck and shoulders, it can cause headaches as well. Um, you can become very snappy. So you know, someone not leaving the, the coffee or the tea teaspoon in the sink, they put it next to the sink and suddenly there's an argument in the house. You know, all these kind of things that wouldn't really uh, affect you normally are now really amplified because you've, you've hit that, that threshold. So there are some tips and things that you can try and do to, to try and increase your threshold or make sure that you've got more of a gap here to, to play with. But because of what's going on at the moment, because of the, the coronavirus and the news and everything there's, that's going on, our baseline is, is actually starting off much higher. So instead of waking up in the morning and we've got all of this to play with, we're now starting off, say, maybe up here. So as everyone's baseline is higher, we can reach that threshold quicker and then we might lash out or, or, um, or get irritated or frustrated much quicker. 
So some things that we can try and do to, to increase that threshold or, or um, try and de-stress is uh, try and being, being creative. So a lot of people who, you know, when you think back to when you were a lot younger or, or when you had more time before you started working and stuff, people love to paint or draw or sew or cook or, or do or dance or do something that used to be very creative, which they now don't do anymore. So trying to uh, get that old pack of paints that you had uh, stored away in the, in the attic or in the garage out or um, putting on some music and having a bit of a dance with the kids or, or with your partner is, is an amazing way to kind of let off a bit of steam and, and focus really in on the task at hand and, and you don't worry about all the external stuff. Um, another good way to, to de-stress is to actually declutter the house. So if you look at your, uh, your living room or the bedroom, the kitchen, um, the, the garage, and you open the doors or you look to the corner and there's just piles and piles of stuff that's accumulated over time, now is a really good time to, to spend a little bit of time uh, just cleaning the room out, going through everything and making two piles. One pile is stuff that you use regularly, stuff that you uh, want to keep or might have sentimental value. And you know, another pile of things that uh, you haven't maybe used for, for over, give it a time limit, six months, a year, something like that. If you haven't used it and you haven't touched it in a year and it does not have sentimental value, it can be either given, be given a very nice home somewhere else or can be, be thrown out. Now try and repurpose or uh, give to charity shops or to, to a fam friend or family member that, that might, may want something like that. But if not, just try and get rid of it. Because your external environment, when it becomes very cluttered, it can also affect the mind. And once you declutter that external environment, it does bring the stress levels down. So that's also something to, to think about at this time. Um, another thing to try that I know Dr. Charlie went over last week is uh, breathing techniques. So we often don't really focus on our breathing. We don't think about it because it is a completely automatic uh, action that just happens. We need to breathe to stay alive. But if you start focusing on your breathing, you can actually start feeling a lot of your body senses much better. And there's certain breathing techniques that we can work on. So like Dr. Charlie went over last week, uh, box breathing is a very uh, common one where you can breathe in, for example, four seconds, hold for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, and then hold for another four seconds. So you can think of it as, as a box. So breathe in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four, and continue along those lines. Um, another easy one that I work on with my with every patient that comes in to see me is the three, four, five breathing technique. So this is breathing in for three seconds, holding it for four, and then out for five seconds. And just counting in your head as you're going along. What that's going to do is get you to focus on the breath coming in and out, not thinking about everything else that's going on. And as your exhale is longer than your inhale, it starts to activate a nerve called the vagus nerve, which just relaxes the body down. So those are a couple of things that you can try um, with regards to breathing. Um, as Dr. Connor spoke about today in detail, sleep is, is very, very important at this time. You need to get your sleep, which is, uh, which is great. Um, just be careful on not sleeping too much and the quality of sleep that you're getting. So things that affect that are, as Dr. Connor was saying, caffeine uh, really affects the sleep. Alcohol as well affects your sleep, your REM sleep towards the end of the night. Um, and also if you are spending too much time in bed, if you would normally say get seven to eight hours and you're now spending 10, 11, 12 hours in bed, just because you don't have anywhere to go, um, that can have a bit of uh, detriment on you as well. So uh, make sure that you're going to sleep and waking up at about the same time each, each day. Um, reading is incredible at getting you to switch off and to focus on something different. It can help with the, the mind as well. So um, a lot of people have stacks of books next to their bed that they've just accumulated or people have given them that they um, really want to read but have never had time. So many people tell me, I've got so many books, I just don't have time to read them. So now, now is a great time to do that. Um, or look back at your bookshelf and see what you have in the bookshelf that you may have read 
five, 10, 20 years ago that, that really meant something to you then and reread it. Um, I have a book here, The Alchemist. I don't know if you can see The Alchemist. Um, this I've read two, three times and every time I read it, I actually get something different from it. So it's, it's a wonderful book. Another one is The, the Monk Who Sold His Ferrari by, by Robin Sharma. Um, also a very, very good book. Um, and the one I'm reading at the moment is called The Power of Now, which um, is wonderful. And I've had this um, since Christmas. Uh, my dad gave it to me for Christmas. So um, really, really good to get into that now. Um, a couple of other things before, before we head off. Uh, warm baths. So getting into the bath in the evening, really relaxing, lighting some candles. Just be careful not to burn towels or anything like that. But getting into a nice warm bath and just relaxing is, is a very good way to calm the, the nervous system down. And then some exercise. So trying to do, as Dr. Connor said, which helps with the sleep is the exercise, but also with your body's stress response and your nervous system. So trying to get into a regular routine, even if that's yoga, stretching, walking in the woods, running, um, there's loads of different activities that you can do. Um, and I do go into that into another, another podcast episode as well, where we talk about movement and things like that um, in a bit more detail. Um, and also on, on my website that I just launched, drkerrickallenbrook.com, I have a few resources and things like that. So if you want a bit more detail in it um, and, and to find out how stress affects the immune system, uh, also in a bit more detail, then, then go and have a listen and, and have a read to those, to those two.